Hello and welcome to another video in Penn Futures series about data centers, data center water usage. Uh, this is the third in our series of videos. Previous videos include what is a data center and inside a data center. So if you are interested in those matters, I invite you to go back and watch those videos. Before we get started, a little bit about me. My name is Bridget Meyer, and I am a staff attorney in Penn Future's Poconos office. Uh, Penn Future is a member-supported nonprofit environmental organization that strives to protect Pennsylvania's air, water, and land, and to empower citizens to build sustainable communities for the future. My work at Penn Future focuses on land use, water quality, and watershed protection. And prior to joining Penn Future, I was an associate attorney at a law firm in Chester Springs, Pennsylvania, where my work focused on municipal and land use law. So let's talk about data centers and water usage. So the first thing to know is that water usage from data centers can be broken into two different types. Uh, the first is the direct water consumption of a data center, which is the water that's used at the site of the data center. This is mainly used for cooling. There's also indirect water usage, which is primarily the water that's used in the process of generating electricity for data centers. Uh, this occurs at the point where the electricity is generated, which is usually not on site at the data center. In this webinar, we're mostly talking about the direct water consumption on site of the data center. So what is the water used for? As I alluded to a second ago, for the most part, it is cooling. One of the main reason data centers exist is to provide climate control for servers and other IT equipment, and many cooling systems use a water-based system to perform this function. The amount of water that's used depends uh, mainly on the type of cooling system, the size of the building, and the outside temperature. Uh, water can also be used in data centers for domestic uses, such as sinks and toilets, and humidification. However, cooling, if you are using a a uh, water-based cooling system will be the overwhelming majority of the water used in a data center. So what does a water cool chilling system work uh, look like? Covered this uh, a little bit in the previous video, but in case you missed that, here's a diagram of how this type of system looks. So inside the server room, which is where all these servers and computer stuff is located, there's something called an air, a computer room air conditioner or computer room air handler. This blows air around the server room, so it circulates. Uh, warm air is drawn from the servers into the unit, and then cool air, after it is created, gets blown back out. When the warm air gets drawn into the unit, it is blown across a series of coils that are filled with water. The water then circulates down into the chiller. And inside this chiller, there is a refrigerant cycle that takes the heat from this loop of water and transfers it to a separate loop of water. So this water in here does not ever mix with the water up here. Uh, the water, once the heat is transferred to this second loop of water, it gets pumped outside the building into, oh no, a, a water tower, a cooling tower. And that we're going to talk about in more detail in the next slide. This cools the water. The water is then transferred back into the loop, back down into the chiller, where it is ready to pick up more heat and circulate around. Meanwhile, the loop of water from the server room has now cooled down due to this cycle. So the cool water is pumped back into the air conditioning unit and the air that is getting blown across that is cooled off and is blown into the server room where it cools down the servers. So outside the building, we have the cooling tower. So the warm water that we talked about just a second ago gets pumped into the cooling tower and it is sprayed out over what is called the packaging or fill. This increases the surface area of the water and enables it to cool more efficiently. Uh, there are fans inside the cooling tower that draw outside air across 
this fill and that causes some of the water to evaporate and then the rest of it gets cooled down and flows down to the bottom of the cooling tower. Uh, the cooling tower may also have what is called drift eliminators that capture some of the water that's being evaporated and recondenses it and lets it flow back down into the bottom of the cooling tower so it's not lost. So all this cooled off water ends up down at the bottom and then it re-enters the pipe and goes back into the building where it goes back to the chiller and collects more heat. Uh, due to the evaporation, a portion of the water is lost, so new water gets pumped in here to make up for that difference. Uh, also, due to the evaporation cycle, uh, impurities can get concentrated in the water, so periodically water needs to be discharged to eliminate these impurities. Uh, this is a process called blowdown. Another system that can use water for cooling in a data center is called direct evaporative or adiabatic cooling. In this type of system, a fan will draw air from the outside. So over here is the outside of the building. It gets blown through a wet medium called the adiabatic layer. So this is a surface that is wet. Uh, this cools down the water cools down the air and the air then gets blown into the building with the blower and the other half of this system takes warm air from the building and blows it back out to the outside. So where is the water coming from for these systems? Well this sort of depends on where the data center is located. If there's a public water supply available, a data center will most likely connect to the public water supply. If not, they can use well water or also, in some cases, reclaimed wastewater, which is the effluent that comes from a wastewater treatment plant. So sewage is treated and at the end of the whole series, the process, there's an effluent that is not, um, it's not drinkable water, but it is suitable for this kind of purpose. So sometimes data centers take advantage of that and use reclaimed wastewater from wastewater treatment plants. So the big question then is, how much water are we talking about? Well, this varies a lot. There are a lot of factors that depend or that influence how much water a data center will use, uh, the main one being the type of cooling system, but also things like size and the climate. So to illustrate this, uh, I have a chart here that comes from a study that the legislature of Virginia performed last year. Uh, if you don't know, uh, Northern Virginia is kind of the data center capital of the world, so they have a lot of data centers there. And their legislature uh, recently conducted a study to determine the impacts in a bunch of different areas. Uh, one of these is water. So what they found is uh, there's a whole range, as you can see here. Uh, these, the least amount of water consumed of all the data centers they studied was uh, less than 500,000 gallons per year, which is uh, 1,370 gallons a day, to more than 273 million gallons per year, which is 660,000 gallons per day. Uh, as another point of reference, Google has three data centers in the Dallas, Oregon. These consumed 355 million gallons of water in 2021, or about 972,000 gallons per day between the three data centers. This represented 29% of the total water consumption for the city of 16,000. So if you are like me and have a hard time visualizing just how much water this is, here's a couple of uh, points of reference that might help with that. Uh, one, an Olympic sized swimming pool holds about 660,000 gallons of water. So that largest data center in Virginia that we just talked about this would be withdrawing about this amount of water every day. Uh, the average American household uses about 300 gallons per day, which equates to about 109,000 gallons per year. Um, if you, like me, are in the Poconos or you are familiar with the Kalahari Water Park up here, uh, this uses about 293,000 gallons per day during their peak season. Uh, we also have Sanofi Pasteur's Swiftwater Vaccine Production Facility. 
and that uses about 659,000 gallons per day, which is the largest water consumer in the area of the Poconos, basically. Uh, one way that water usage effectiveness can be measured for data centers is through this number called the water usage effectiveness, or WE. W-U-E, it's kind of hard to say. And it measures uh, how much water is used relative to the uh, energy consumption of the IT equipment. So this effectively indicates how efficiently the data center is using water. Uh, a lower number means the facility is more efficient and a higher number means that it is not. Uh, the average across all data centers is 1.8 liters per kilowatt hour. This, the unit of measurement for this is liters per kilowatt hour. So it is measured by the liters of water used over a period of time uh, over the kilowatt hours of power consumed by the IT equipment over that same period. Uh, water usage effectiveness does have some limitations in telling us exactly how the water impacts will occur. Uh, it doesn't differentiate between water sources, so this number is the same whether you are withdrawing from public water, a well, uh, reclaimed water, or whatever. And it also does not take into account any water that is used for power generation. And on that matter, it's important to know that water consumption in a data center is essentially a trade-off. Uh, cooling systems that use more water use less energy, and vice versa. And uh, I know we alluded to this at the beginning of the presentation, but generating electricity uses water too. So when you have systems that are using less water on site, they are typically using more electricity, and that means that water is being used somewhere else to generate that electricity. Uh, this is because most of the power in Pennsylvania and in the United States comes from thermoelectric power plants. Uh, this is the category that includes coal, nuclear, and natural gas plants, which all uh, function by boiling water to create steam, and the steam then spins a turbine to generate electricity. A natural gas combined cycle generation uses an average of 2,803 gallons per megawatt hour of energy produced, and coal averages over 19,000 gallons per megawatt hour. Uh, wind and solar, however, do not use cooling water. Uh, U.S. thermoelectric plants are the largest source of water withdrawals in the United States, and they account for more than 40% of total U.S. water withdrawals. So for data centers, even if there is not a lot of uh, water being used on site for cooling, it's possible that the water is being used kind of on the back end to generate the electricity that is used for the alternate type of cooling system, as well as the actual uh, electricity needed to run all of the servers and things. So what might data center cooling look like in the future? Uh, there are a couple of systems that have been used or and in somewhat uh, usage, but are not overwhelmingly popular at the moment. Uh, one thing that Microsoft experimented with was underwater data centers. So from 2015 to 2020, uh, Microsoft actually put some data centers in these underwater capsules and put them underwater uh, off the coast of Scotland. They uh, claimed that the project proved that the approach was feasible. However, they discontinued it in 2020 and have not announced any intent to continue building underwater data centers. Uh, another type of cooling that has exists and may be becoming more popular is immersion cooling. So this actually takes entire components of the data centers, the servers, and directly submerge them in a specially designed tank filled with a fluid called a dielectric fluid. And that conducts heat, but not electricity. So it doesn't short out everything that you stick in there, but it takes the heat away. So examples of the type of fluid that can be used are mineral oil hydrocarbons, synthetic fluorocarbons, or silicone fluids. Uh, there's also a system called direct-to-chip cooling. So this is also kind of a liquid-based 
cooling system, but instead of cooling the entire room where the equipment is located, the cooling liquid is actually passed through these plates that are placed in direct contact with the server components. So it's more efficient, the cooling fluid absorbs the heat, and then flows through a type of heat exchanger that transfer it to another medium for outdoor rejection, uh, similar to the air or liquid cooled systems we talked about earlier. But because this is taking the heat directly from the source and not uh, the entire room, it can be more efficient. So we do have an entire video about data centers and municipalities coming up later. But just briefly, what does the water consumption mean for municipalities as they plan for data center development? Well, de depending on the amount of water consumption and the source of the water, data centers do have the potential to impact aquifers and surface waters, particularly if they are drawing uh, from wells. So uh, municipalities, when they are planning and writing ordinances, should avoid allowing data centers in locations where water resources are scarce or sensitive. It should also require data center applicants to show that they will use res water responsibly and not negatively affect other water users or the environment. So that about wraps it up for this video. Uh, we invite you to watch the other videos in our series, including what is a data center, inside a data center, uh, data center power usage, the economic impacts of data centers, and what can municipalities do to prepare for data centers. Thanks for watching, and I hope to see you in some of our other videos. Thanks.